Today's video, we're going to talk about LinkedIn campaign quality scores and how they affect the profitability of your campaign massively to the point where it's literally make or break, whether or not you do this or not. I'm going to go through the, some case studies slash examples of different campaigns that we've ran on LinkedIn that generated super high quality scores. And then from that, how to replicate that on your end of which I'm going to explain why it works as well. What makes up the quality score, how you can, you know, basically juke it to your advantage and so that you can outcompete the other people who want your customers as well. In general on LinkedIn, Biggest problem I see people, by the way, all the time making on LinkedIn is they don't actually focus on marketing content. They focus on marketing their service. That's lame. Nobody wants to see your ad for your service or your product on LinkedIn, no matter how good it is. And even if they do like it, it's not going to work well enough to pay for the high cost of running ads on LinkedIn. What works? is drawing people in at a super high rate with what they want and then that piece of content marketing your solution. So, and there's a certain way to do this that we've mastered and I'm gonna tell you about, but that if you wanna make a lot of money on LinkedIn, this is how you do it, okay? So with that said, we'll get into the content. LinkedIn campaign quality scores are affected by two primary things. And this comes not just from me, but also from LinkedIn if you dig into their formula, you know, the, how they for, calculate their quality scores. Uh, past overall click-through rate in the campaign. So in other words, that campaign, out of all the ads that you ran in that campaign over time, that click-through rate, they look at that as, you know, your end, you know, for your score. But also the second thing is the highest click-through rate from your best ad within the campaign, because there's usually one ad that works better than the other. And so they're not going to judge all the ads by themselves cumulatively to give you your score. They're actually going to divide the click-through rate of your best ad by your, your click-through rate of your ads over time altogether to get your true campaign quality score. So if you have all of, if you have an ad that really crushes it, you can bring up your overall campaign quality score pretty quickly because of how they calculate it basically. Okay, so with that said, obviously, if you don't, well, if you don't know by now, a campaign quality score on LinkedIn is uh, based upon a scale of one to 10. And with that, obviously, you can increase your score by uh, increasing your click-through rate, which you increase your click-through rate the easiest way by being more relevant and niching down. So, and quality score, if I, if I, if I, if I haven't you know, stated the obvious already here, Quality score affects how much you're going to pay per click. The higher your click-through rates, the less you're going to pay per click. That's just how it works. So you could almost think of LinkedIn like you're paying per ad impression. For the audience and the people that you're trying to get, the higher the rate you can get them to click through, the more money you're going to make because you're making better use of the ad space. The campaign quality score that LinkedIn has is really just an indication of how well you're matching, you're giving your audience that you're trying to target what they want and something that's relevant to them and that, that, that they can want, but also packaging up what you have in a way that is enticing to them and how high your click-through rate is. You get the click-through rate up by being more relevant and more enticing, your click-through rate's gonna be much less and you're gonna start to make money at a certain point. Different people will get by with different costs per click that they can pay, but for the most part, paying 10 bucks a click is not profitable and if you could get to where you're paying $1 per click, which we do quite often at our agency using this method I'm going to share with you here, you can make money. Of course, a click is not, you know, for somebody looking at content versus look, you know, clicking on your ad because they want to hire you is two different things in terms of the conversion rate you will get. But the real magic comes where you can interweave the two, where you can market content because ultimately, I mean, come on. If you're on LinkedIn, you're on there not to see stupid ass ads for services or products. You're see, there to see interesting content to keep you abreast of certain you know, things that are up and coming, certain things that can help your business, whatnot. And 
when you could push out content out there while marketing your, your product or service at the same time, you get the best of both worlds, okay? That'll get your super high click-through rates, and as a result, you could pay like a dollar per click. Do to get a dollar per click, you gotta be able to get click-through rates of around 3% on your sponsored content ads, okay? So, um, you just gotta be, you just gotta understand what your audience wants. And ultimately, what your audience wants in a nutshell is they wanna know how to make money or save money. This is what all businesses want or people who work at businesses want. And that's what LinkedIn is about. So instead of going in there and just being totally you know, lame and, and saying that we offer a really good sales training system and it really gets results and you could double your sales closing rates, your lead closing rates if you use it, which nobody's gonna believe you by default, you could come in and say, this person did it, or even better, I did it, in the words of a customer of yours, and you'll get off the charts click through rates in comparison to where you know the sales training ad that you ran that says you know that we offer great results your click through rate might only be 0.3 0.4% on average for something like that whereas if you say this particular customer got xyz results your click through rate might be 2% and if you get to where you take it to the the furthest level where you actually interview your customer and make a piece of content that looks like they made it itself. Yes, it's gonna look like it's gonna come from you if you look close enough, but it looks like they made it and you advertise that, that's the best of all. You can get click-through rates like 5% and pay like 50 cents a click, like it's, you're paying for Facebook traffic. LinkedIn tr uh, clicks, by the way, they seem expensive, but they're much higher quality. They convert at a much higher rate than, let's say, Facebook. When you compare Facebook to LinkedIn side by side, Yes, LinkedIn's gonna be three, four, five times more expensive per click, but the, it converts three, four, five times better. I know this because this has been repeated at our agency time and time again. You can make money on Facebook, you can make money on LinkedIn. It's just the LinkedIn traffic overall is better quality. So anyway, um, if you have the capability then to make an ad that sounds like it was written in the voice, you know, by your customer essentially, and then drive them to a page that looked like it was created by them, do it, because it works amazingly well, and that's the best thing that works on social media nowadays to sell a product or service. But if you don't want to do that, at the very least, you should tell about the customer's results, because that is what they, people actually want to hear, that's what's actually going to help them, and they're going to believe furthermore. So, what you do is, you, and if you're running ads already, what you do, going back to what I was saying before, is you niche down what you have. So if you have the sales training service, instead of saying you have a sales training service, you say you have a sales training service in Illinois. Or you say you have, oh, I screwed this up, in, in Illinois. Or you say you have a sales training service that's for furniture stores. That automatically gets your click-through rate higher than what it was. Or you say you have a sales training service that makes sales managers look like gold to their, to their uh, direct reports. The more honed in your message by default to whom you're targeting, the better your click-through rate's gonna get every time. With how uh, refined the targeting can be on LinkedIn, there's no reason why you can't do that. It just takes time to set this up. And a lot of people don't, won't do it. They'll scoff at this because they're saying, oh, I don't have time to do all that. Well, you're missing out on millions of dollars in profit and sales long-term if you don't do this because it's very hard to get LinkedIn ads to be profitable without doing this. Because the ad, you know, the cost to get in front of your audience is the, it, it's high and it's been pushed up by other people who want to get in front of those same people. If you have something that's more relevant than them, you could get more out of a click and a viewing of your ad than other people. Now you actually have your edge to make money. And so it's not about showing up anymore online with online ads to make money. The, the day for that is past. You gotta have something that's better. And being better is just simply being more relevant in what you're saying to the consumer. So you niche down further with your targeting and then you come forward with an ad that speaks to them more directly. So uh, with that said, if you were, with my previous example, if you were had a sales training system 
uh, with that, instead of targeting all the people that are related to sales on LinkedIn, you would target sales managers directly, okay? And then you say, for sales managers, this sales training system, blah, 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 blah. And if I see that as a sales manager, obviously I'm gonna be two, three, four times more likely to click on it, obviously, right? But, so why don't more people know or do something about this? I guess because they don't think about it, but mainly it's just laziness. They want one ad that they run for everything and it makes the millions. That's what everybody wants. If it were that easy, somebody else would, would have done it. And the days for that are long gone. So with that said, you can niche down real, on LinkedIn using their targeting filters and not just use one audience that you target for and then with one ad for everybody on a broad basis. You create several audiences and you make several different ads for them. That's, it's really that simple. Uh, furthermore, if the, within the LinkedIn system, you could upload email lists to LinkedIn and get as specific as you want. If you want to target facility managers at factories that are over 100 employees, you can do that so that you can have an ad that says, attention facil facility managers of mid-sized plants. Da 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 da. And then the way that you do that is you go, you can build a, a, an email list manually, going hiring a, a, like a VA, offshore VA to go find you all the emails on, you know, online basically. Or you could go to a site like Nextmark mailing lists and look for lists of facility managers there. Nextmark has a, basically a search engine for different mailing lists that you can use to email people. But what you could do is take that email list and then use it to, to create an audience on LinkedIn. So if you just want to make an audience of just facility managers at a plant over 100 employees, like I said, you can do that. You first go to you know um, Nextmark to find the lists, and then you upload your list to LinkedIn. Now your ad could be super laser targeted, and therefore relevant, more relevant than the typical person that's targeting that same person, so that your campaign quality score can be a nine plus versus a four plus that you would have had before that's gonna make the difference between making money and not making money. Like I said, it's not impossible to pay 50 cents a click on LinkedIn. Furthermore, the, like I was saying before, the conversion rate on the traffic you get and the quality of traffic from LinkedIn is so good. On a, if you drive people to a landing page that has like a white paper there or whatever, and you want them to opt in before reading your content, you can get people to opt in at like 15%. Whereas on Facebook, that might be two, 3% realistically. So, um, or, it, if it, or on Facebook, if it were two, 3%, it could be 15% on LinkedIn by, you know, just stating that again. But on a 15% and a conversion rate and a 50 cent cost per click, we're under 10 bucks a lead. If you can't make money on 10 bucks a sign up by then calling the people that are on your on your list, assuming you ask for their phone number or just emailing them afterwards saying, hey, I saw you downloaded our content. I'm a product expert. If you have any questions about any of this, let me know. Then you're doing something wrong in many cases. For in a B2B context, you should have a high ticket size for the most part. So you pay, you know, 10 bucks for a sign up. And even if you get 1% of those to buy, you're already, you're in the black already. And that's the type of thing you should be going for. So with that said, to give you some real examples of where I used this before, and to not give you, on by the way, on this channel, by the way, on this channel, I don't actually show our clients' campaigns because they, they, they pay us and they don't want the world to see their campaign because they could just, people can rip it off and it won't be useful anymore. If you or anybody watching this wants to get a free PPC service from our agency, in exchange of being able to show you these exact things that I'm talking about here on this channel in practical application, we're, we have applications for that. And practically speaking, as long as you have over a certain amount of revenue in your company coming in, we'll do it every time. If you've got 400K or more in uh, yearly sales revenue, we'll give you a free campaign as long as you're willing to let us publish what you're doing both now and then after we would help you on the channel for the public to see so we can educate better. But anyway, with these three different examples I'm giving you here, these are real examples that are still running to this day that are working extremely well. We got ROI of 700% plus on each one of these. 
I've changed the wording a slightly a little bit, so we're not giving the, you the exact, exact headlines and so forth, but it gets the general idea across. We had a sales training company. I have already talked about this one, but uh, what we did is we created different campaigns for each state so that our, our quality scores would be higher in general just from that factor alone. But it also merges a couple different of these three things in here, which is uh, industry and then also location. So we said something like, Illinois Furniture Store use uses our sales system to increase closing rates by 97%. So if you're a furniture store owner and you're from Illinois, you're extremely captivated at that point in time. And we didn't have to do anything that creative here. We just, like I said, you took the core concept they gave you, which is people just want to know the results you provide. And then you tack on one of these three things and you'll have higher click-through rates every time. Another company that we ran a campaign for who uh, they did wholesaling of bulk candy. We targeted people who are in the uh, owners of convenience stores. And we had a headline that was like industry guide for convenience store owners to decrease candy court candy ordering costs. So like I said before, it goes back to the same thing I said before. You want to go forward with content. People are there to look for content and they're looking to save money or make money. Put, put together a piece of content that will provide that, you'll get super high click-through rates, especially when you could say convenience store owners and niche down that content and then only target convenience store owners, which there's no targeting option on LinkedIn for that. So we had to upload a list of convenience store owner email addresses, but then we got it. Like I said before, that's a lot of times what you have to do, but it's so worth it. Uh, we're talking about three plus percent conversion or uh, click through rates on that and quality scores close to a 10 on that on every single campaign that we're running. Same thing with the furniture store example that we have here. The last example to mention here was for a the company that sold industrial cleaning supplies. Really boring product, but when you can actually, you could take any product as long as it saves or makes money and make it interesting with a piece of content. And with that, you could say something like facility managers use new grease cutter to save on cleaning costs. If you're a facility manager, you want to see what the hell that is. I'm curious of what that is. And then you, in the content, what you basically do is you just start explaining that this is a new trend, that people are using it, and that this particular company here sells it. And that's all you basically have to do. And then the people who click through that link are going to be super qualified to buy that product. That's your funnel right there. So in that particular case, we were targeting facility managers, which we had to upload a list of facility managers of a certain size of company, which in and itself is obviously a problem because a lot of people have to have companies of a certain size and you could filter them by employee count on LinkedIn. Or when you're just going to upload your email list, you could just make sure when you reach out to Nextmark or wherever that you get that you get your email list from, you just say, I only want companies of a certain size. And usually they'll have that uh, select is what they call it. So you only get pay for that part and then you have it. So when you're doing this, by the way, as compared to like Google ads, it's superior. It takes more work to get it working, but it's way superior long term because A, you're singling yourself out as unique so you don't have people going and getting and understanding that they can get it 15 other places compared to Google because you just seem like a commodity on Google most of the time or a lot more so uh, but also um, people so there's like several things here secondly um, dang it how was I going to rephrase this so the major problem with Google is, is you don't know the size of company you have uh, um, that's clicking or going to be seeing your ads on Google. You kind of can do that, which through some other techniques I won't get into. But if you need companies of a certain size, Google a lot of times isn't going to cut it. If you need employees, uh, companies responding with employees over 100 or more, you might not even be able to find it on Google for most niches. Uh, if that niche is very diverse and there's a lot of small and there's mostly small companies in that industry or niche and the leads you pay for are all going to be companies that are too small whereas if you go this route you can make damn well know if they respond you got the right size company so therefore it's 
it's superior in that way. Um, and then, you know, I guess, uh, and then the final thing is, is there's a lot more action you can get this way. If you're just waiting for people on Google to search your terms, yeah, that's great if you can get that to work too. But going this direction, you can get, you know, hundreds of customers because you can get in front of every single potential person who needs and wants and could buy this product versus the small section on Google of people who realized that they need your product or service that will be Googling it on an ongoing basis, even though they might be a little bit easier to sell because it was their idea to begin with. This, you know, the quality of leads you get here is actually not that much different if you write the content correctly because you built the value up in that content and it looked organic. It looked organic to them, especially looks organic to them if it looks like it was written by the customer itself, which if you, by the way, if you want to take that all the way, have the customer write the content or make it the content seem like it was coming from the voice of a, of a customer and then get up, uh, put it on a site that looks like a news site. So it's just like, looks like a, the customer published the article themselves and then have a link to your site and that crushes it even more. That's the way I actually recommend doing it. But anyway, that is the last example of what you can do and why this stuff works. You're basically taking demand where there were no, basically was no demand existing and you made demand. Uh, you know, if you have a new product that has, a lot of times you guys' products or services, people don't even know the significance of why they need it. They, like with our business, an ad agency, they don't know our ad agency is better. So how, they don't even know to search for it. This is the only way to build your business. You can't build it through Google alone. There's not enough there. And furthermore, the people on Google, you can't control who you're getting. Yes, it, it's nice if you can monetize that, you know, weed out the bad versus, you know, and keep the good and all that. A lot of you guys can't do that because what you are selling is too exclusive to a certain part of the market and so forth. Anyway, I'm getting kind of off track here. That is how you get the LinkedIn campaign quality scores to go up every time. You gotta put work in, you gotta break down your campaigns into smaller sections so that you know who you're speaking to so you can speak to them directly. It's really that simple. And if you do that, you can get cost per click as low as like 50 cents on LinkedIn with super high quality uh, you know, clicks at the same time, high conversion rates, high selling rates if you know how to set up the, the rest of the funnel the article and then the, do the follow-up right. The biggest, uh, the last thing I'll say as well, the biggest problem I see with clients that are selling B2B today is they don't have a good selling system set up. They expect if a lead's generated, they can get back to that lead whenever the hell they want. They can do whatever the hell they want on the phone. For things to work, you need what they call sales orchestration where you're literally mapping out every single tiny little piece of the sales process so that anybody can follow it and it's not just up to chance. And if you don't do that, you're not gonna get enough from the leads to make money. And then also, you know, doing, you know, being considerate and doing things like when you get a lead, sending them a package out in the physical mail that has more material about your company. Why? Because it builds a bigger bond with them once you get them as a lead. A lot of people don't wanna do this. It's too much work, too complicated. They just want the lead to come in and buy. If it was that easy to get rich, everybody would do it. So anyway, with that said, I'll wrap it up with that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you liked the video, I'd appreciate it if you would give it a like and consider subscribing as I have a lot of other videos on this channel just like this one on how to make money with ads on Google, Facebook, so on and so forth. Coming straight from an ad strategist who does ad strategy all day long. I'm not a professional YouTuber or course seller or any of that BS. You're getting information straight from the source on this channel and for myself. And if you like the channel, you'll like my blog at guaranteedppc.com slash blog, as well as you can follow me on my column at entrepreneur.com if you like my content. If you have any questions about anything I covered today about LinkedIn or ads in general, leave me a comment below. I get back to every single person who leaves me a comment or question on this channel in the comment section, usually within a couple days. Um, as I mentioned on earlier in the video, I'm taking applications for anybody who wants me to be able to work on their account for free in order to, in exchange for being a case study on our channel here. We got people more and more all asking all the time, Corey, give us some exa real examples. 
Well, we need some volunteers to let us publish their results in order to give examples on this channel. Everybody, I know how it is. Everybody wants to see everybody else's results, but nobody wants to share their own results. This is the way that it's been since the beginning. And so, you know, you know, get, you know, be the first one <laughs> that wants to step up and do it. Reality is, I know why people don't want to do it. If your campaign is going to work, it's not going to work for long if everybody knows about it. But maybe you've got something unique that other people can't copy. I don't know. But if we're our, uh, taking those applications. If you are looking to work with me exclusively and have a, me work on your campaigns, reach out to me at guaranteeppc.com slash, or uh, sorry, just guaranteeppc.com. I'd be happy to look over your stuff and see what results we can get you. We don't charge fees to our clients until we get you a certain amount of sales lift or lead number lift on your campaigns up front. And the only catch or caveat to that is, is we don't work with just any company. But if you want to see if we can work together, reach out to us. Uh, beyond that, if you are not looking for an ad manager per se, but if you just want to shortcut your way to success, if we've worked in your industry before, like one of the industries we were talking about today on the call, you can use our ad templates that we've developed for your industry and get the same results we're getting without any of the work and time and effort it took to get it. And uh, we sell them for a one-time fee. So if you're interested in that, you can reach out to me as well. I'll let you know what markets we have results in, what those results we've gotten in your market. And then with that, you can literally copy and paste the same success we've had in your market in your own account. Uh, we've, these templates work so good, you could very easily start another business up with the winning templates that we have. We got several people that have done that already. So if you're interested in starting up a side business, selling leads or you know whatever, reach out to us. It's the best way to start off a business, which which is having a campaign that you know works at your side. But I'll wrap it up with that. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I hope to see you on my next video where we have another great strategy for you then. See you later.